This is Mark Wells, and this is the applicant report for For My People. This past May 19th, we celebrated what would have been the 84th birthday of one of the greatest leaders and activists of the 20th century, Malcolm X. On that day here in Detroit, we welcomed two visitors that helped us commemorate the importance of Malcolm X to the Black Liberation Movement. These two brothers, Maurice Carney and Kambali Musa Vuli, also stopped in Detroit to update us on the situation of the Democratic Republic of Congo. Carney is the executive director of the NGO Friends of the Congo, and Musa Vuli is the student coordinator of Friends of the Congo. So you might ask, what is the link between Malcolm X and the Congo? In the 1960s, Malcolm spoke frequently about how oppression in places like the Congo is connected to the oppression of people in Mississippi and Vietnam. So what is it that was going on in the Congo that was so important that someone like Malcolm X felt the need to speak about it? Well, to understand the plight of the Congo, we must start with the 1885 Conference of Berlin, in which several European nations met to determine how they would carve up Africa and divide its resources amongst themselves. King Leopold II of Belgium acquired the rights of the Congo territory and immediately initiated one of the greatest crimes of plunder and genocide the world has ever known. During his reign over the Congo, an estimated 10 to 13 million Congolese people lost their lives in a brutal system of forced labor. From 1885 to his death in 1909, the Congolese population was cut in half. The Congo is a country that is 75 times larger than Belgium, but the importance of the region cannot be understood in simple geographical terms. At the time of Leopold's rule, rubber and ivory were the two were two of the principal resources being extracted from the region. And with the late 19th century boom in the world rubber market, Leopold would soon amass a personal fortune estimated to be worth more than a billion dollars in 21st century terms. To acquire as much rubber as possible, Congolese men were required to pay the so-called rubber tax, with wives and children being held captive until the men returned with their quotas. To enforce these quotas, the practice of whippings, torture, rapes, the murder of children, and the cutting off of hands became commonplace. Finally, in 1908, under international pressure, Belgium took over possession from the Congo from Leopold. Belgium ruled the region until 1960 when the Congolese people elected its first prime minister, a former mail clerk by the name of Patrice Lumumba. On June 30, 1960, at a ceremony celebrating Congolese independence, the King of Belgium declared Congolese independence to be the, quote, crowning of the work conceived by the genius of King Leopold II, unquote. Two Congolese officials followed the king and offered words of praise for their colonial masters. Then Lumumba, who was not scheduled to speak, took the podium and delivered a speech that electrified the Congolese people. Lumumba told the truth about the misery, tears, and bloodshed of the Congolese people. In the speech, Lumumba promised that Congolese people would, quote, show the world what the black man can do when he works in freedom, unquote, and that they were going to guard their country's resources so that it would truly benefit its children. The speech set off Western alarms. In August of 1960, U.S. President Dwight Eisenhower gave the order to CIA Director Alan Dulles to eliminate Lumumba. In October of 1960, Belgium itself ordered the assassination of Lumumba. The Congo's vast resources were too important to Western powers to let control of the region go to an African who could not be bought and who would use these resources to benefit his people. Lumumba was assassinated on January 17, 1960. His remains were chopped into little pieces with a hacksaw and dissolved in sulfuric acid. With the support of the U.S. and Belgium, Joseph Mobutu C.C. Siko was installed as a puppet president, a reign which lasted 31 years. Under Mobutu's reign, Congolese misery and exploitation continued as Mobutu amassed a personal fortune estimated to be at least $5 billion. With Mobutu in power, the West had a friend that guaranteed the protection of Western interests. In terms of mineral wealth, the Congo is Africa's richest nation. It is a major source of the world's copper, diamonds, gold, uranium, manganese, and many other minerals. 80% of the world's cobalt supply is found in the Congo. Cobalt is needed for jet aviation and other high-tech high products. It is also estimated that the Congo holds 80% of the world's coltan supply. Coltan is necessary for the production of the cell phones, video games, laptops, iPods, digital cameras, and other items that we have all come to depend on.
Western companies continue to bring in billions of dollars in profit while 80% of the Congolese people earn approximately 30 cents a day. The battle for the Congo's resources is also the principal reason for the deadliest conflict since World War II. Since 1998, more than 5 million people have died as a result of the war for the Congo's resources. African nations Uganda and Rwanda are staunch, staunch allies of the U.S. and have been given the resources to wage war in the Congo for access to minerals that they export to Asian and European countries. In 2001, the U.N. named more than 30 Asian and European companies profiting from the Congo's minerals through deals with Rwanda. So the next time you make a call on your cell phone, Listen to a tune on your iPod or send an email on your laptop. Keep in mind, there are millions of people in the Congo suffering so that we may enjoy these Western luxuries. This is Mark Wells, and this has been the African Report for For My People. <laughs> Attention, all elected officials, state representatives, state senators, city council. <laughs> If you need someone to do your reading and do your writing for legislation you want to sponsor, contact For My People at projectbait.blackgold.net. <laughs> I'm Ify the Clown, and I approve this message. <laughs> Customer receipts, payroll, inventory, mailing label, tax reports. I've got computers, but my business still isn't organized. What can I do? You need the Office Assistant billing and bookkeeping software. Bring your business into the 21st century. Call Electronic Services, 313-341-1821. That's 313-341-1821. Little Rock Baptist Church is the going church for the coming Christ. You want to find out more about services which are held every Sunday at 11 a.m.? Call 313-872-2900.